the Lord be with you. We welcome you to Zion today. Today's a day of celebration at Zion. We call it our Celebration of Generations Sunday. And what we do during that service, during this service every year, what we're, we're celebrating God's grace that he gives to the generations. And you will see the uh, showcase of generations throughout the service today. Different vocalists, different speakers, uh, different musicians, and I, I can't even go through them all right now because there are a lot. And I just want you to sit back, and you're going to have to get comfortable because it's going to take us a little longer today because there's a lot of moving pieces. One of the moving pieces I'm very excited about is after the sermon today, I think most of you have had the opportunity to meet, meet Bliss, and what a delightful young lady. She was baptized in the NICU shortly after being born. And we weren't able to celebrate that together as a congregation, but we're going to get to do that today. So today we're having a, a acknowledging the baptism. So she's already been baptized, but we're going to celebrate that baptism today as the family of God. So we're celebrating with the Newman family. Thank you for being here and family and friends who are here with them. We're so excited to welcome you and celebrate with you today this great gift that God has given to your daughter. That's one piece. I'm also very excited to welcome Ms. Book here today from, from IKM Manning. She's going to be directing our choir, and I'll tell you more about that a little bit later in the service, but so, so thankful to have you here, and our high schoolers and our mixed choir are going to be singing a song. I'll tell you more of that story later on in the service, so thank you for that. For our other musicians and vocalists, from a violinist to a soloist, to our brass who will play at the end, even at the organ, uh, Timothy and Nathaniel are going to be switching back and forth, because I keep remembering that he's going to college this fall, and we need to have other organists stepping up, and so Nathaniel's going to be take, learning how to play as well. So you'll see them switch back and forth a little bit. So a lot of moving pieces. So my, my request for you is celebrate it. It may take a little longer than a normal Sunday, but celebrate all that you see God's grace among the generations of Zion. The other things that are here in your worship folder, just take time to read those on your own, please, because there's a lot of things happening throughout the week that I don't have time to get to right now, but a lot of things to celebrate. Even uh, some of the hymns, in fact, I think three of the hymns today are hymns that were, were written specifically for this celebration. So they'll be very specific to what we're doing. So we celebrate in a lot of different ways today. We're so glad you're here with us. Let's turn to our first song.
we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. So as we get ready to hear our first reading, I'll let the tech team get set up here. So you're not going to see a person up front. I, I have the privilege on your behalf every week to go to Acura and to lead worship there. One of the residents at Acura, Janice Munson, and you know her husband, Dwayne. Faithful members, longtime members of Zion, they love you, and they love that you send a representative to them every week to bring the word of God and the sacraments to them. So I went this week and asked, asked them a couple weeks ago if they would read one of our readings. And this reading from Nehemiah, the theme is they've come back from exile and they're rebuilding things and they're listening to God's word. They have this moment in their heart where they realize they've fallen short of it. But Nehemiah says, no, no, today is a day of celebration. And he encourages them to celebrate. So Janice will be reading for us our reading from Nehemiah chapter 8. And let's see if we can... We ready to go on that? All right, so Nehemiah chapter 8. All the chapter people eight. gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people, for he was above all the people, and as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly. And they gave that sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people said to all of the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now before I invite forward our next readers, I simply want to point out why it's important to hear some of these voices. Because they are members of the generations of Zion. 
because they are loved and cherished and they watch faithfully online every week and they so appreciate your remembering them and sending someone to them. Many of you go and visit yourself. Thank you for doing that. But Janice's voice represents not just herself, but the many members we have of Zion who are physically unable to be here on Sunday mornings, but they are there in heart with you and they are worshiping with you. And it's good for us to remember and to celebrate their inclusion in the generations of Zion. Stride family, if you would come forward. You are going to be reading our reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which focuses on the church as the body of Christ and the various members within the body. And one to you, and you can divide this up however you want to. I'll get out of the way. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through many are one body, so it, it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Stride family. Well done. Thank you so very much. Now, as I turn these mics off, and if you want to just get the, oh, that's right, I, I almost forgot. Vivian, you're all ready to go, and I almost skipped you. Vivian Blackford is going to play for us. Uh, she's, so Vivian is learning the violin, and she also participates in All Strings Attached. It's the Carroll Area Symphony. It's a wonderful resource in our community. I hope that someday all of you can have the privilege of hearing the symphony play. But you get to play in, are you in the Minions, is that correct? Right, so that's the learners, the beginners, and we're very excited to have you play your violin for us. Go ahead.
Thank you. I have one more. Is that right? Good. Go ahead. She has one more for us. my mic on all the way. Thank you, Vivian. Well done. We're so excited when we welcome our student musicians. Do keep encouraging them. And as I've always said, you're always welcome to ball and draft one of your children or grandchildren to play for worship. Now, if you can go ahead and get the next video prepped and ready to go, I think you'll recognize this person, but I'll, I'll let him introduce himself. Greetings, friends in Christ at Zion Manning from Pastor Jonathan Rigard at Trinity in Cherokee. It's a joy to virtually say hello and to take a short moment in this worship time to give thanks to and for you. As Zion has been blessed with your generation's campaign, it's fitting to remember the past, rejoice in the present, and faithfully ready for the future. As a Zion member of the past, from fourth grade through high school and beyond, to generous support received through college and seminary, the church home of Zion provided us stability, encouragement, and nourishment of faith and forgiveness in Christ in those very formative years. From Sunday school to youth group to worship to fellowship and many things more, it's an upbringing that I reflect on often with many thanksgivings, thinking of many who were influential and instrumental to that faith in those important ages. Not just in terms of a pastoral vacation now, vocation, but the solid foundation of faith given in those younger years that is still held as a husband, as a father, and through it all as a continued child of God. As many things change in a church some 20-some years later, with new faces and families, others who have since entered the church triumphant awaiting the resurrection, changes with building projects and ministries, changes with trials of any church on earth, but also continued joys and opportunities. Amid all the changes that occur in time, the ongoing blessings are because of the unchanging fact that Christ crucified, risen, ascended, and returning, that Christ Church continues to be blessed. Christ Church at Zion Lutheran in Manning, Iowa. As you continue to, as many generations and people, but united as one body in him, remembering the past, rejoicing in the present, and readying for the future, May every generation, and in that, every individual, older adult and child and family, continue to be blessed, united in that true faith together as a congregation and in the great community in which God has placed you. As we hear today Christ's proclamation that Scripture has been fulfilled in Him, may that word continue to be in hearts and minds in your worship and life together in faith as Zion continues to faithfully proclaim and live that word of Christ for generations now and for many more generations to come. Please stand for the reading of today's Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And he, Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. 
And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there are many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. may be seated. Before we turn to our hymn, I just want to remind you, this is one of the members of the generations of Zion. Think about the influence Zion is still having through the generations of Zion. As you know, Pastor Rigert is this Pastor Rigert. He's at Cherokee and is doing outstanding work. I have the privilege of, sharing, of serving with him on the board of directors in our district. There's some really wonderful things happening at Cherokee uh, because of the leadership of Pastor Rigert. And we're so thankful that he was willing to offer greetings to you and to be a part of our celebration today. Our next hymn is based upon the psalm, Psalm 100, which uh, we're just doing it in hymnal, hymnic form today because we don't have time to do the whole psalm. But this is a psalm that talks about God's faithfulness to the generations, written specifically for this celebration. We turn to our hymn. Grace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God speaks to us in our epistle reading today from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
Today, as you know, is our Generation Sunday, a Sunday where we celebrate the generations of Zion by showcasing these generations throughout the service and by seeing them as a manifestation of God's glory among us. And if you recall from last week, glory has to do with God's importance, his reputation, his honor and gravitas and impressiveness. So seeing the body of Christ in our midst the body that God has formed, is one way that that glory becomes visible to us. Seeing the generations of Zion is the manifestation of God's glory among us because it shows us God's grace in Jesus at work among us. Now, what we are calling Generations Sunday also has another name. It's also often called Life Sunday. Now, we don't have time to discuss the importance of some of the aspects of being pro-life. So let me just say that there is a place for advocacy and legislative action. And I commend the work of Lutheran Family Service of, here in Iowa, Lutherans for Life nationally, and the Lutheran Center for Religious Liberty in Washington, D.C. Advocacy and legislation are important because... You build fences or good laws around the things you value. So laws not only protect, like a fence, but they also teach. They're not the way to change hearts. Only the gospel does that. But they do teach what we consider good and valuable as a people. And we should aim to teach that life is good and valued from the womb to the tomb. So we advocate for and we pray for the end of abortion, for the protection of the elderly, for Christians to embrace adoption, for the end of the industry of creating and destroying human embryos, and for the end of the donor reproduction industry. These do not value life. They commodify it, and they readily dispose of it. I'm happy to visit with you about any of those things, but I want to get to our focus for today. So there's one thing I want to highlight from our text before we get into our main point. I want you to listen again to just a few sentences that tie into something we talked about a couple weeks ago. Paul says, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. And then, God has so composed the body, and then, God has appointed in the church. Now I want you to notice, Who's doing the verbing? I know that's not a real word, but who's doing the verbing? Who's doing the acting? Right? It's God. That's important to see. The verbs belong to God. It's just an important point. Okay, now, Paul is working with the image of the body, of this diverse but unified whole in Jesus. And he wants us to see that our baptism connects us to this body. Baptism is the way that God works to connect us to this body. And Paul's going to go on to talk about this body, about the body of Christ, as the church. And one of his great points is that each member is honored within the body. Young, old, rich, poor, sick, healthy, capable, compromised, because each is baptized into the body. Because each has been brought into the body of God, the body of Christ, by God, and arranged in that body by God. Because God is the verber for the body. Each member then is honored in the body. This is really important to see because this is where unity springs from. And when it's missed, this is where division emerges. So because God has arranged the body, there's no boasting in the body. There's no condescending comparing in the body. There's no ranking in the body. Because you are baptized into the body, you are valued in the body. You're an honored part of the body. So Paul can write these beautiful words. God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, 
all rejoice together. And you do this well as a local manifestation of the body of Christ. So last week, many of you gave generously to support our member, Janet Smith, as she works through the expenses of her medical journey. And I know that meant the world to Janet. On her behalf, and as she expresses in the bulletin, thank you. Deacons who are here, you faithfully send out these Journey Through Grief books for those among you, among us, who are journeying through grief. Now, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but if you've ever received one of those books, can you just raise your hand for a second? If you've received one of these Journey Through Grief books. Okay. I want you to know, and even if you've not received one, that your church grieves with you. And we are journeying through this grief with you. Even more, we want you to know that your Lord is journeying with you and with us, right? Scripture says, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what? He is with us. Larry, where are you today? Larry Menke, where are you seated? I'm not find you yet. He's here somewhere. I know I saw him. He's back there. Okay. Larry, years ago, when Curtis Meem, Weems, now he's in heaven with Jesus, when he lived in town, Larry, you brought him to church. He had Down syndrome. He couldn't drive himself. But Larry, you brought him. And he loved the church. And if he got to light the candle on Sunday morning, he was through the roof. Just so excited. Mary and Reem, who's now with Jesus in heaven. She eagerly assisted me at the plaza every week, and she made sure that people were out for church on Wednesday because she wanted them to hear the word. And now Dorothy Knutson, who's recovering from knee surgery, she's faithfully taking that position. A little over a year ago, a couple came to me, and they said, hey, we want to give Zion some money to give away. We want you to share it with anyone you see who needs it. Just give it to them. Bless them with it. Isn't that amazing? That's absolutely astonishing. It was one outstanding way to empower the church to bless people. Here, here's several thousand dollars is what they gave. And they said, give it away. Bless people. When Pastor Johnson and Tiffany needed to step aside from active ministry to focus on him getting through this cancer, Pastor Vogel and Pastor Rigard immediately stepped up into the gap to fill the ministry. And Debbie Moosefeld eagerly stepped in to help with confirmation right away. Rhonda Moore even drove down from Fort Dodge from the district to fill in one of our Wednesdays where we had a gap. Some of you have been through unimaginable grief unimaginable grief over the past few years. I mentioned the journey through grief books. But I've watched this body grieve with you, walk with you, pray for you, hold up the banner of hope for you in Christ. And while we know that we cannot repair what has been broken in your hearts, we know that the promise is full healing and joy in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that there we will be whole. And we hold up that banner of hope for you. Students, when you've had success on the field or on the court or on the course or when you mark some significant accomplishment in music or in academics, I have heard members of this body congratulate you because they care about you. I've already mentioned this, but in a few minutes... Several of our high school students are going to sing with a mixed choir. So over Christmas, I sat in the audience at IKM Manning at their vocal concert, and I saw all these Zion kids up there singing these beautiful songs. And I texted Jody after. I wasn't doing it during the, during the concert, Ms. Book, just so you know. I texted her afterwards, and I said, Hey, do you think we could get them to sing in church? And Jody said, And do you think we could get Ms. Book to direct? I said, yeah, ask them. And they said, yes. So we are so excited to celebrate your voices today. And 
Thank you, Miss Book, for being here and doing this. Thank you, high schoolers. Thank you, Zion Choir. Now, when we're done with the sermon, we're going to celebrate with the Newman family. Many of you are just getting to know this young lady, Bliss, this beautiful little girl. Bliss was born with spina bifida and baptized in the NICU shortly afterwards. And we weren't able to celebrate together. But that changes today because we are celebrating God's gift to this little girl and the importance of this little girl in this body. God placed her in this body and she is indispensable. She has such great value here. Now, I could go on and on and talk about your delivering meals to our home limited members, to our friendship committee delivering Easter baskets and gifts of gratitude, to the many individuals who have committed themselves to praying for members of this body by name, to the people who reach out to someone they haven't seen for a while to see how they're doing, to the meals I've watched you deliver as individuals, to another member or another community member even, to the hugs and the tears that you share. The body of Christ is alive and well in this place. In fact, the love and concern that you show for one another is one of the greatest witnesses that you give to the world. When you embrace your identity as the body of Christ, when you see one another as valued and cherished members of the body of Christ, when you regard one another as God regards you, not as more important or less important, not as not as more needed or less needed, not as wealthy or poor, smart or ignorant, young or old, influential or insignificant. When you see one another as God sees this body, as the redeemed of God, as the treasure of God, as the forgiven of God, the world sees the body of Christ in action. And that is why we are celebrating today. You are the body of Christ. Individually, members of it, baptized into it. And God, who controls the verbs, has arranged each one of you as he chose. And because God's grace is given and received here, this body is beautiful. The glory of God is visible here in the body of Christ. And that is worth celebrating. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord to life everlasting. Amen. Okay, at this time, Newman family, I'm going to invite you forward. You can gather right here next to the baptismal font. And children, once the Newman family make it up here, give them just a chance to get up here, you are welcome then to come sit on the floor so you can see. So come on forward. <laughs> oh... Come on up, guys. You can find a seat. We're going to celebrate the fact that Bliss was baptized. Come on up, little people. You can come up. You can have a seat right there on the floor so you can see. Oh, we're going to be sad. Come find a seat, guys. Hey, Bliss, I have something to give you. I'm going to give you this in just a minute. Are you going to watch? I have, some, I have a candle I'm going to give you, too. Now watch. I'm going to give you a present. Come on up, guys. Find your seat. So glad you're here. So today we're not actually doing baptism. She's already been baptized, but she wasn't able to do that with you because this is your sister in Christ. We're going to celebrate with her today. So it's a very happy day. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. The Apostle Peter has declared, Baptism now saves you, and this promise of salvation is for you and your children. In baptism, God puts his name on us with the water and his words so that there may be no doubt that we are surely his by all that Christ has won for us through his saving death and resurrection. Now, Bliss was unable to be baptized in the presence of this congregation, that we may celebrate that she was baptized with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. You have come to attest to her baptism in the presence of this congregation. 
So before the Lord and his church, I now ask you, was this baptism administered as has been reported? If so, answer, then yes. Say yes. Yes. Now, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you bliss, the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you a present. And this has your name on it. And you see the little shell there and the three drops of water for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you want to hold it? There you go. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You recognize this, don't you, Read. We talk about this in our preschool chapel, don't we? You recognize that. Now, I have a candle to give too. I'm going to let Dad hold the candle, but it's your candle bliss, okay? I'll bring it over to you. Okay. Can you see it? Let Dad hold it. Okay. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted bliss the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Can we say congratulations? And Bliss, I have a couple more things for you. That's the box to put that back in when you get a moment. There's a special picture book that Dad and Mom can read to you. I'll have Mom help you hold that. And this is a baptismal certificate. So you can blow that out. Guys, how exciting to celebrate. Isn't this great? So we're so excited to celebrate with Bliss that she's baptized and she's a member of our, our church and our, the body of Jesus and she's your sister in Jesus. So wonderful. Thank you and congratulations. Now we're going to start heading back to our seats. Kristen is coming up to sing and you guys are heading back. So we'll make that transition and I'll turn it over to you whenever you're ready. Remember me in a Bible cracked and faded by the years. Remember me in a sanctuary filled with silent prayer and day. To age and heart to heart, bound by grace and peace, child of wonder, child of God, have remembered you. Remember me.
Remember me When the color of a sunset fills the sky Remember me When you pray and tears of joy fall from your eyes And age to age and heart to heart Bound by grace and peace Child of wonder, child of God I've remembered you Remember me Remember me When the children leave the Sunday school with smiles Remember me When they're old enough to teach Old enough to preach Old enough to leave And age to age And heart to heart Bound by grace and peace Child of wonder, child of God I'll remember you Remember me Remember me Thank you. I hope you understand how beautiful that was, not just for the words, but that young man there is a beautiful young man too. And he's a part of the generations of Zion. So we celebrate in so many different ways today. And I also hope you understand how hard it was to do what she just did, right? And to make it look easy. So thank you, thank you, Kristen. Now, as I clear my eyes, let's stand. We're going to confess the creed, and then we'll have our high school choir come forward and do the, uh, the offering, too. Now, we will confess the creed. We do this every week with joy and boldness, because this is what we believe in the core of our beings. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. Now, choir, we invite you forward. And as they're coming forward, we'll gather our offering. And then kids, once they get up here and get themselves situated, then you can bring forward your children's offering.
Thank you. Thank you so very much. Beautiful. As they return to their seats, we stand to pray. Lord God, as we've gathered today, we have seen your goodness at work in the lives of your church, members of the body of Christ. In so many and diverse ways, we have seen the members of this body, and your grace is at work in our hearts, and we are deeply grateful for that grace. Bless each of the members of the generations of this, this church. Bless, bless the body of Christ. Help us to grieve with those who grieve and celebrate with those who celebrate. Help us to walk together in faith, confessing Christ our Lord and longing for his return, the renewal of all things, the removal of all that is broken, and the opportunity to be joyful and happy together forever. Grant us faith and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need of your care, especially Joeene Bowman, Justine Schwizo, Nancy Grimm, Julie Weller, Jeannie Groon, Sherry Steffes, Jim Devers, Rick Spock, John Sonickson, David Bowman, Patty Meaves, Leggy Thompson, Virgin Kruger, Janet Smith, Jean Mankey, Nina Pratt, Janice Munson, Annette Hilsebeck, Darlene Asmus, Amy Benton, Pastor Johnson, and Jay Kuhn. Give them grace for each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our missionaries, Pastor Oliver, Pastor Lopez, Pastor Ferry, Pastor Mark and Megan Monti, for cross-cultural worker Molly, allow them to serve with honor and joy, confessing Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For law enforcement and military men and women, Scott Stribe, Stephen Grimm, Marshall Hansen, Aaron Stokel, and Lillian Ginzen, that you may protect them from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our partnership with Trinity in Manila, that it may be strengthened and the gospel be heard. For our preschool, that the love of Christ may be shared with children and families and the kingdom expanded. These prayers we bring before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We now joyfully continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is fitting and right so to do. It is truly fitting, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing together. We pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Before we stand to receive the benediction, thank you to everyone who participated in all different ways uh, all over the place today. I hope you were able to see God's grace at work and to celebrate the generations of Zion. We have a few more generations to celebrate as we turn to our last hymn. I want you to check out that row up there. All right. And we got a lot of high schoolers and middle schoolers up there, and we're so blessed. Al, we, we roped Alan into playing this time. We're glad to have him on the trumpet. Tim, thank you for help coordinating practices. So wonderful to welcome our trumpeters and tromboners uh, and uh, our organists. So stand to receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We've sung this before. We are Christ Church.